risk. Did you know that every day you eat your bread, you are taking a risk? Risk is a strange association to give with this grain of wheat. But in wheat, half of the protein is gluten. Gluten. This is my model of gluten. I stole it from the toy box in my clinic. <laughs> And gluten is a very interesting molecule. We didn't know that it was so harmful until now. When I was a baby, my mum and dad had no idea that gluten might harm me or them or anyone in our family. This was in 1950 when I was a baby, at the same time that Professor Wilhelm Dickey was looking after his patients in Holland. And he noticed and he heard from his, the mothers of his patients that wheat probably was causing these children harm. And he was the first person in the world to establish that gluten was the cause of what he said is celiac disease. And celiac disease is a condition where the gluten damages your bowel. And when I was in medicine, in med school, celiac disease was one paragraph in a 2,000 page now whole books are written about it. This is me at 10, and I reckon my mum did a good job nourishing me despite her lack of knowledge about gluten and any other of the fine intricacies of micronutrients. And they were very proud of me a couple of decades later when I got my MD, a, a doctorate in food allergy, because I had been very interested in how foods can make and this is the classical picture of a celiac child. You can see his big tummy, his thin arms and legs. He feels miserable. He's in pain most days. He's not growing. He's got diarrhea. He's probably got reflux. He's stunted. And no one knew what to do with him until Professor Dickey showed it was gluten was the problem. And in 1960, there was the development of what's called the small bowel biopsy, where you can put a tube right down into the intestines, snag a piece of tissue, pull it up, and have a look and see. And that tissue was damaged in celiac disease. It was called villus atrophy. And celiac disease became a gastrointestinal illness. Of course, if you've got gut troubles, and you're eating a food that's causing the trouble, then it must be a gut problem. And so the gastroenterologists hijacked the disease. I'd like to introduce you to another child. This is Elizabeth. She'd given, my, given me her permission to show her in the bar. She wasn't expecting to have this photo shown in Tauranga today. But I didn't meet Elizabeth in the bar. I met her when she was six. She came to my clinic, not in a ballet tutu, but looking like this, thin, miserable, she was in abdominal pain, she was refluxing, not growing, and her mother was desperate, desperate to find an answer for her child, because she was nourishing her child just like my mother was nourishing me, and she wasn't growing. But I was in a quandary because I was a junior consultant at Christchurch Hospital running my gastroenterology clinic. But Elizabeth had already been seen by two other professors. They had both declared she had celiac disease, had both done the fishing test, putting the tube down in the stomach, pulling out a piece of tissue, and it was negative. They declared she did not have celiac disease. But Elizabeth was lucky. She came to my clinic and I had an interest in food allergy. And the second reason she was lucky is because of this. The hospital I was at put a brand new test in called the anti-gliadin antibody test. This is brand new. And I had the opportunity to do this. I had already done this in England in another <coughs> clinic. And the beauty about this, gluten, when you eat it, doesn't get digested can get through into your blood and the 
The immune system hates it. It's the enemy. And it makes an antibody against it. And the antibody's job is to click onto gluten and get rid of it. Well, we measured this antibody in Elizabeth. And the level was very high indeed. And so I went to my colleagues and said, look, I know what's wrong with Elizabeth after all this time. She doesn't have celiac disease. Gluten is making her sick. I'm going to put her on a gluten-free diet. Yep, that's what they said, nothing. <laughs> they were astonished. They said, Rodney, only children with celiac disease warrant a gluten-free diet. But I went back to visit his mum, and we had a chat. That month, the next month, the next month. And after nine months of chatting, I had the courage to put her on a gluten-free diet. And she came back to my clinic the month after that, It's a miracle. She's got better. I wrote in the notes, at last we are getting somewhere. And this is Elizabeth at eight. And this is Elizabeth at ten. She's nowhere like the child we saw earlier on with the disease. And I thought, she must have a gluten illness which isn't celiac disease. And I thought, going back in my clinic, how many other children had this problem? And I hadn't picked up on it, even if I was a food allergist. And so I began to do the tests on every child that came to my clinic. And I presented these beautiful children who had endoscopies which were negative, had positive antibodies to gluten, to a medical conference, and it was met with scepticism. I thought, oh, well, there aren't enough children. <laughs> so I did a hundred children next, with endoscopy and blood tests. I presented this to a North American meeting called NAPSCAN. There was scepticism. And I thought, well, there's not enough children. <laughs> I now presented the next year a thousand children that would come through my clinic. 80% had got better on a gluten-free diet. None with celiac disease. And this is the answer. Dr. Ford, the only children who warrant a gluten-free diet are celiacs. <laughs> <laughs> Double-blind randomized controlled trials, well, these kids got better and they were sick before. And we were just changing their food. We weren't giving them a drug. We are taking them off drugs. What else do you need? I thought, I know the problem. It doesn't have a name. <laughs> so I coined the term the gluten syndrome. And I sent books all over the world. and said, look at this. And was met with scepticism. We did more research. And it turned out that other people in the world were similarly irritated like me. And they had shown that gluten affects the nerves. And I came up with the idea that most of the symptoms from gluten were actually nerve damage. And then other people began writing books. And last year, these three books came out. Toxic Staple, Wheat Belly, and Grain Brain. All showing that wheat and gluten harm everybody. And then to cap it off, Professor Fasano, he showed in his book, Gluten-Related Disorders, that around 10% of people in North America were suffering from a gluten-related disorder. And Fasano is not just an also-ran, he runs and is director of the Celiac Disease Research Center in Boston, Massachusetts. And this book isn't written just by him but by 15 other co-war workers internationally. I was overjoyed that these people were coming to the gluten-free party. But it's a lot worse than this. Most of the people in this room are not on a gluten-free diet. I know from Sheldon that 40 people requested gluten-free food. 
It's hidden in the right hand back. <laughs> I went there and there was no food left. It was hard to get there. Next TEDx in Tarama, they're going to have all gluten-free food except for a gluten corner. Because nobody can digest the stuff. Catherine Tilly got celiac disease whilst working in a bakery in a big flour mill and she did some research showing that nobody can digest gluten. Gluten cannot be pulled apart in your body. Most proteins can be easily pulled apart in their individual component amino acids and reformed in your body as human protein. We just poop this out. Nobody can digest it. The waste of chewing. <laughs> the next thing that Alicia Fasano showed that everybody who eats gluten gets an inflammatory reaction in their gut due to zolulin, which is a chemical, a substance that makes your gut leaky. Everybody in this room. Professor in Spain, she wrote this article and she classed gluten as an anti-nutrient. That it's worse than eating food. It's, it's a negative effect eating this. And she showed that there are other proteins in wheat that are equally as harmful. Gluten is just one of the many toxic molecules in wheat. And worst of all, Marius Hegedaslo has shown that these gluten, the gluten antibody, the gluten complex, other proteins and other antibody reactions to gluten all affect your brain. That gluten is predominantly a brain disease. And the problem is that if you get the brain damage from gluten, you may not recover. It's been shown that gluten can trigger autoimmune disease, other food intolerances, many, many illnesses, and probably everybody is best off gluten. You don't know what you're eating when you eat a loaf of bread. It's been advertised at a dollar a loaf today. <laughs> That's a gluten nightmare. <laughs> what are you going to do for your children? What are you going to do for yourself? My mum and dad are dead now. I think that they were gluten intolerant. My mum was thin, she had thyroid disease, she had a bit of arthritis. She f fatigued, she had Alzheimer's. Dad had arthritis, dad had eczema, It's a bit cranky. <laughs> and he developed late onset dementia. What about me? I've decided to be gluten zero. It's a term I've developed over the last 10 years. I'm not going to risk this. I had an email yesterday from Keith, a friend of mine, who's a professor of agriculture. He said, Rodney, you know we've talked about gluten. He says, well, when you were talking to me, I thought the gluten was for other people, gluten-free. He says, not now. I've been gluten-free for the last year, and I've lost my arthritis for 20 years, and I've lost my gut problems, which I've had for 20 years. Gluten-free is for me. What about you? Are you willing to risk it? Do you smoke? Are you willing to risk the damage of smoking? Do you drive a car? Yes wear a seatbelt and have airbags, you take the risk precautions. Are you risking taking eating wheat? Are you risking giving it to your family? I had a talk to Quinton up here. He's a celiac. His parents are celiac. He's got celiac in his family. And they are the problem family. The relatives don't like them coming to do this because it's awkward. <laughs> it's embarrassing going to the gluten a restaurant asking for gluten free. The chefs don't like it. The wait staff don't like it. We're in irritation. <laughs> but in 10 years hence, the majority of people in New Zealand will be not taking the risk 
they will not accept gluten. We are going to have a gluten-free nation just as we're going to have a smoke-free nation. I advise you, do not take the risk. <laughs>